Hopefully I figure out how to edit a green screen into my video. Okay, fun facts on sturgeon. Not Sturgill Simpson, sturgeon. There's 27 different sturgeon species. They're in the same category as spoonbills, paddlefish, those goofy looking fellas. This fish is pretty much just as goofy looking. They're covered in very thick, large, beefy scales, and those scales give them a very distinct dinosaur look. The coolest thing about this fish is that they are so long lived. They're ancient. The longer they live, the longer they get, and bigger, girth and length. They have smooth skin and then armor scales over the smooth skin. So they got both. I shouldn't be calling them scales, I should be calling them scutus. S-C-U-T-E-S, scutus is the real word. So there's several of the sturgeon species that can grow over 12 feet long. These are the largest freshwater species in North America. I don't know, maybe the world. I should try to find that somewhere. I mean, the largest sturgeon recorded was a female in 1827 measuring 23 feet and seven inches long. 7.2 meters, youch. Scary big for fresh water. Need a new wetsuit if you saw that while you were underwater with it. Very surprisingly large fish. Oh my goodness, 23 feet long. Is that a bus? That must just be a bus. Let's just say that's the length of a bus. Who cares? Okay, 3,400 pounds. That doesn't weigh as much as my truck, but still a bus. <laughs> Most of them are just bottom feeders. They got a big sucky yucky mouth and they just off the bottom all day. Sorry about that noise. I regret making that noise. Some of these around the coastal areas, they'll migrate out into open ocean water even. But yeah, they spend most of their lives just feeding in river deltas and rivers. They're around here. We got shovel nose sturgeon around here. I've caught plenty of those in my life. Usually just snagging them because they suck stuff off the bottom all day. People go after their roe, their eggs. It's a luxury food caviar. This has led to serious over-exploitation combined with their other conservation threats. Most species are critically endangered at the edge of extinction. I don't, this, this shovel nose certainly isn't. Like There are so many of those that you can just snag with a jig. You can count on it around here. Maybe it's rare still, and I'm just really used to catching an endangered species. Who knows? 200 million years old, early Jurassic period. These things were swimming around in the water with other early Jurassic fish. And to add to that, they've undergone very little change, morphological change within their species. They, they just look the same. They are the same fish that existed back then. It's pretty cool. They have a high tolerance for large ranges of temperature, different salinities of water, and they lack predators due to their plated armor. So I don't know why they're saying they're going extinct. They're in lakes, white sturgeon, they're under dams, they're in the rivers, they're in the deltas, they're, I don't know. To me, they're like everywhere. Why are they going extinct again? And they just suck garbage off the bottom to eat. So they don't need a specific prey to hunt or anything. Sorry, I don't mean to discount any of the research done about the endangered sturgeon, but let's just move on. Maybe there's just different species specifically that are getting endangered and the shovel nose isn't really one of them and the white sturgeon isn't really one of them. You don't see a lot of uh, the other 27, you know? or 25. And let's move on. This is a pretty good article for Wikipedia. It's big. And now that I scroll through it, I see all the different species and the different parts of the world that they're from. They're all over the world. Chinese, there's a green sturgeon, Northern Pacific Ocean green sturgeon. There's sturgeon species specific to different seas and they're only found there. The ship sturgeon, finger barbel sturgeon, golf sturgeon. They're found in the Gulf of Mexico. There's a lot of uh, small populations of very specifically located sturgeons that they're all trying to have not be killed off completely. That's that's why, okay. Now we can move on. They have a post-embryotic notochord, their spine, and it's kind of soft. It, it stays in an embryotic state. So they're just this nice, soft, flowy fish with hard armor all over it. I have a resilient, smooth type of connective tissue. It's like the tensile strength of the inside of the fish is very high to support the essential exoskeleton of bony plates around it. And their tissue is unique for being very, very strong. They're covered with five lateral rows. I think that's what I carved. One, two, three, four, five. Yeah, five lateral, lateral, lateral rows of scutus and four barbels. Maybe I'll get the blapplicators out and put some barbels by its mouth on this one I'm carving. They're sensory organs. They precede their wide toothless gummy mouth. So these fish are in the classification of being very, very long lived. Some of the longest lived fish that exist. 
over 100 years. It takes 20 years for them to reach sexual maturity and be able to reproduce. Slow growth and slow reproductive rates equals extremely high value placed on their eggs. <laughs> That's what it equals. You can get a lot of money for some delicious sturgeon caviar. Never had it. I've had the chance to have it. I've seen them after I've snagged one. I've like handling it. I've accidentally squeezed eggs out of some. So I had the opportunity to put that in my mouth, but I didn't. Was not interested. Their average lifespan is 50 to 60 years. So to get to 100, that's a pretty good feat for a sturgeon. I think that's the average of all species of sturgeon though. I'm sure some species of sturgeon, there's a lot of in this fun facts and it's messing me up. Eight to 15 days needed for embryos to mature into larva fish. They're just saying how difficult it is for these fish to reproduce compared to normal fish. Yeah, I know. Oh, they eat shellfish crustaceans and small fish. I have snagged, or I have what I thought was snagged, sturgeon in the mouth, but maybe they were going after my jig because they thought it was a little crustacean making its move. They feed non-visually, so they do not look at what they eat, probably for the best. They use their sensors very much that precede their gummy mouth. So the ones I caught in the mouth must have just been cruising along and felt my jig move, and it went Oop. Many sturgeons leap completely out of the water, usually making a loud splash that can be heard from a half a mile away. Maybe they're trying to land in a certain way that makes a louder splash. Let's read on. Why they do this is not known, but it could be group communication, they say. To maintain group cohesion, they leap completely out of the water and make a loud splash. It says maybe they do this to catch airborne prey with their big gummy mouth. I doubt it. It's on the bottom of a big flat head. <laughs> Courtship display, that's probably more likely. Dude's trying to impress the, the chickies the chickies or to help shed eggs during spawn so the females might be doing it to eggs out of them it is really easy to pop eggs out of them so may like maybe that is it using the surface tension of water to shoot eggs out of you they could be escaping predators shedding parasites or to just gulp air air do they have lungs one time a sturgeon leaped out of the water and hit a five-year-old girl fatally injured on a suwanee river after it struck her that's, that's really sad. Keep your eyes peeled for sturgeon just leaping out of the water at you. I had a big carp hit my kayak and turn me around last year. That was scary. All right, conservation, caviar. I don't need to learn more about that. Actually, in the 19th century, it says 90% of the world's caviar trade was sturgeon eggs. So they were really going after those eggs. That nasty stuff squirting out of a sturgeon. 90% of its trade around the world was sturgeons. What? That didn't make any sense what I just said there. See, I wanna know if they breathe air now. No, it says they breathe oxygen from the water. So I, I don't think they're leaping out of the water to gulp air. Okay, now that we cleared that up, fun facts are over. If you recognized what I forgot, you're an astute bait maker, more astute than I. So astute, it's a stupid word. There needs to be fin slots behind the gills and on the belly right there. I'll just have to make sure I seal that up good with five minute epoxy when I install the fins. It's not that big of a deal. It's good to recognize the astute among you all though. I'll get back to work on that tomorrow. So for experimentation purposes, these are the flappiest fins yet. They can just hang down like that. There's gonna be a treble hook coming off the bottom one right there. That will be interesting to see what they do. Okay. I'm gonna get some hooks on this and see how much lead we need to drill out.
Those are a little off, but I can adjust them. I'm getting the fins in. Almost forgot to do that before weighing it. Gonna try to keep those as flush with the body as possible. Those are pretty even. All right, let's test. Oh, it's a slow sink already. I'm gonna take some lead out of this hole and that hole, put the hooks on and see if we still have a slow sink. That is some bait maker lead placement intuition that worked out. Floating without the hooks. That's a pretty slow sink. Not suspending yet. There it is. Nice. That's perfect. Not gonna do anything else to it. Suspends. It's gonna have a super slow sink once the clear coat's on. I didn't have split rings on those hooks either, so. A very appropriate fishable slow sink sturgeon is what this will be. The time has come. We're gonna see what the gator gill does. It might not do anything. I've had nightmares about this thing not having a good action. It's a dangerous thing to put in a backpack and throw on your back, those hooks. Look who's here. We might bump into Bajornson. casually pull that out of my bag. Man, I hope it works. I'm kind of scared. If I can't get the lip to grab water. Here we go. 20 ounces of gator gill. I'm gonna rip it in. That's, that's what I was most afraid of. Oh no. It needs a lip. Yep. Yeah, it needs a lip. Oh, that's disappointing. How about in this video, really quick, I give it a lip. I know this isn't the video for this lure, but I should give it a lip. All right, you'll, you guys will see this thing work by the end of this video. Back in the bag. That's some um, balancing clear and bleed checker mixed up. And that's some super dark gray. It's got like a bluish tint to it. But I put the bleed checker and the balancing clear together because it just gives it this smooth buildup. Any sanding marks that were left, it just erases, but you do not lose any carving detail. Okay, on goes the white, but not in too opaque of a manner. It's just staying a little dark on the top, kind of translucent everywhere else. Most of the white's on the belly. 
things play on. It is also... I'm going back and forward with yellows and silvers and creams and whites, trying to match that. Giving this one some caviar will make it highly desirable. Hey. Man, it can be so scary to put some color down. I'm having color anxiety right now, but this yellow belongs here on that edge. It's gonna highlight it and make it look good. All that other stuff was just texture. Detail smoke black and white. This thing really went through the full spectrum of color. There's lavender in the body even. Blends in with the tan. The pearls will appear and disappear. It's not one specific type of sturgeon, it's mostly a shovel nose, but I put other more colorful stuff that belongs on different sturgeons, especially down in the mouth on this bait. I like the yellow in the head. That was a tough thing to paint because it was so bleh. This fish is so bleh, really. I mean, when you step back and look at this, it doesn't look like much, but some darkness on the top. Low lights, those ribs, scuttus. I think given the tips of these white is going to make it look more bone-like. And this is super transparent white. It's the most transparent white I have. I'm afraid to put this here. It's looking all right. It will go on the tips of all the scutus. I hope I'm saying that word right. Not super, super realistic. I'll admit, but I like it. I think I'm going to come in with the same white in the airbrush, get real close to those spots and have them kind of fade in. Hard to tell. It was kind of worth doing. Maybe I'm being too picky right now. It probably looks great. I think we're ready for a clear coat. Well, an eyeball and then a clear coat. It's going to be a simple eye because I do not have much of a selection when it comes to quarter inch eyes. Good match though. That's what they look like in real life pretty much. They have really light spines on their fins. So I did that as light as I could. We'll see what it looks like with some detail smoke black. Some pretty subtle spinage. Need to get some color on them too. These things have like the full spectrum of their color that's in the body and each of the fins, it's crazy. Start with the yellow and move to the flesh tone. Keep it really faint. Just a little bit of fleshiness, so lavender where the fins meet the body.
over applying super glue. I'm gonna shoot accelerator at that and hope it doesn't destroy the paint. Shoot accelerator and hope. Okay, paint's fine. I'm gonna keep them translucent too. The barbels, I think they need to be shorter. Yeah. Like that. Clear coat. This trip brush has had a disturbing amount of loose bristles. I pulled like 10 off of that. Holy barbels. I'm happy. What a great turnout. After completing this sturgeon, I have a good feel for how difficult it is to make a sturgeon bait look good. This is one of the tougher ones. They just have a non-pattern to them. All the plates, there's no stencil for them. You gotta carve them in and then paint them individually, which makes for a very difficult, like, non-pattern you can't do them all at once like with a piece of mesh like you can scales. So when it comes to pleasing the eye with symmetry, it's difficult. But I took my time and that's, that's the best I could do, I guess, right now. I'm happy with it. Went for more of a shovel nose, tan sturgeon instead of a, a white or a gray. Some yellows, some texture in the head with some yellows. The belly's my favorite part and the mouth and that blue egg sac line. Some delicious caviar for the squeezing. Just kidding. All right, I make these crazy things and just kind of hope that they swim once I'm done. So let's go see if it swims. I, I don't know if mine's broke now or I checked if it needs a firmware update, I'm good. Uh, it was 40 degrees out. That's not that cold. GoPro failed us once again. I was wearing it, as you can see, but a couple hours of footage I took, once I got it in the computer, was only one second long. It was right at the beginning. <laughs> took a fart on me. So, pretty much expect it by now, so I got other camera angles, I took pictures, but next video, you'll see the action of this bait. It worked okay. It was nothing to be impressed with, really. It swam, it didn't have a really wide action. You'll see it next video along with the gator gill. Haven't even put a lip on it yet, said I would, but next video, okay? Just next video, that's the story of my life. Anyway, we caught the fish, we didn't catch, we snagged. 
the fish, and this is legal, don't come after me. I was 300 yards down from a dam. Everything was legal. I only do this once a year. I might do it one more time this year. Once or twice a year. Not the target species. I just poked him in the anal fin. It's bleeding a little bit, but he's fine. I'm gonna let him go. I don't even enjoy doing it that much. There's not a ton of sport to it. You just throw your bank sinker with a treble hook on your line in the water and yank your pole and hope it runs into a fish that's just sitting there, not interested in any, eating anything. It's just a dormant fish sitting there. You just, it, they don't even fight. They just accept their fate. I've never really hurt a fish bad doing this either. You poke them in the side, yeah, but it's like the same as poking them in the mouth. It always kind of skin hooks them too. It's not like a severe impalement. I only used a three out hook, so. Really the goal was to just get the species that I made and put the lure side by side with it. This one happened to have a tag on it even. Snag. Sturgeon. Oh, fellas, we got a sturgeon. We can be done now. Woo! And I just poked him in the side. That's not that bad. Let's get the bait back out and take a picture. This one's got a tag on him, on his fin. They do that for these fellas. Woo, he's pinching me. Look at that. We caught the fish we made. Double nose surgeon. It's official. Probably don't like to get snagged. Be free. That's all we're gonna do. We're done snagging. Mission accomplished. Anyway, hopefully this voiceover works well with the garbage footage I got for all that. And yeah, look forward to seeing actions of stuff in future video. And on to the next bait.